Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we have one of those just super fun projects. It's called the Bible Code in Papervision 3D. What's so neat about this project is just fun, interactive computing, and it has some tradition. Uh, we're going to do a 3D representation of what's called the ELS. That's um, Equal Distant Letter Spacing Framework of the Pentateuch. Uh, all this code is on Google Code, uh, so let's go to that link right real quick. So here's our Google Code link, uh, code.google.com forward slash p forward slash Bible code. And you can go to downloads and download the entire code. And hopefully in the future we'll be adding to it as well. Obviously this is just a representation of the ELS uh, model. We'd have to do a lot more like neural networking and knowledge base to delve further into this area. But it's code that's not out there. I mean, Paper Vision is brand new, and this actually shows you how to switch camera views. So it's a very interesting uh, code base. Let's go ahead and get out of this, and we're going to proceed with the discussion here. Uh, if you want to learn more about Paper Vision and how to get started, we have several tutorials on YouTube uh, Paper Vision 3D, Getting Started in Flex 3, uh, a two tutorial set, Paper Vision 3D Second Life Nav System in Flex 3D and also a part two of that as well. The Pentateuch itself was written by Moses and so we pretty much will just search the Torah. Uh, there was a paper, famous paper, written by Whitsum, uh, Rips, and Rosenberg in 1994 uh, which proposed the equal letter spacing model. A very controversial paper. Uh, let's just talk about the model and what it means. They have a, an equation in the paper. It's n, n plus d, n plus 2d and n plus k minus 1 times d where n is the skip, d is the start and k is the length and so you can see an example of this right here where basically what you're doing is just skipping equal distances and forming words, phrases which seem to have some meaning. Uh, I pulled this off of Wikipedia uh, so you can take it for what you get. Uh, Hebrew religious tradition holds that the text of the Torah was originally given to mankind in a single long string of 304,805 Hebrew characters. The spaces, punctuation, sentence, chapter, and five book structure were all added later to form the modern Pentateuch. The word of the Creator was, according to this tradition, delivered to mankind in the form of a single 304,805 letter word. It is in this context that the Torah is uniquely, specifically, and literally considered by the believers to be the word. Now from my perspective the whole Bible code is somewhat questionable. However, Jesus Christ says that not one jot or tittle will pass away until all is fulfilled. So this kind of takes you back a little bit. This rabbi is saying that not just what the meaning is in the context, but the actual way it's structured. Its structure will not pass away. Its structure is important. So there is the possibility that there is a code in the Pentateuch. Pascal, famous mathematician, father of modern co computing, says, hey look, he's absolutely sure the Bible was a cipher of some type. One of the first rules of hermeneutics is that the Bible interprets itself. key to this 305,000 letter word may be in the book of Daniel. Daniel speaks of a seal that will be broken towards the end of time. The book is shut up. It's locked. So who who knows? That key may be in Daniel. Total speculation. Of course, understanding the ELS structure is what we want to do today. Basically, it's just a cylinder of letters. Just one long word wrapped around the cylinder. And as I said earlier, uh, fuller uh, computer analysis would have to be done. I think in knowledge space and using neural networks. Maybe we'll do that in the future. Uh, let's take a look at the program and a brief look at the code. We're in Flex 3 right now and we're going to go ahead and run the Bible code code. And so let's hit the run button. And here's the code coming up right here. And you can see you have this cylinder of letters. Now we have a speed control here in the first camera view so you can slow it down and actually go the opposite direction. We'll just put it real slow. And you can actually zoom in and zoom out. Isn't that cool? and all this is using the paper vision engine. You can switch to a second camera view which is unique to uh, I think a lot of paper vision code and you can actually use the uh, navigation keys like you would in Second Life to navigate into the cylinder itself and you can use the page up and page down to page up and page down and then you can go back to the camera, the second camera view. So we're actually switching camera views in paper vision. I think that's pretty cool. 
So just a brief explanation of how the code works. Extremely simple. But yet there's really not much code out there, so this may be of interest to you since uh, it's probably one of the first uh, codes that I've seen on the web given away for free where you're actually switching camera views and you're navigating uh, using the uh, scroll bars and flex. A lot of this stuff is actually uh, done in Flash. Of course, we're pretty much committed to Flex because of its uh, ability to grab data and handle educational uh, uses. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code itself. This is the code in Flex. I'll open this up a little bit so we can look at it. Uh, the first part of it is all the input statements. Then you declare all your private variables. Then you have your initiation function. And in your initiation function, you have the heart or the rendering engine. And you're declaring two cameras, camera 1 and camera 2. Camera 1 is a camera 3D, and camera 2 is a free camera. Basically, the camera 3D basically is for filming targets. That gives us the ability to, f to spin around the object. And the other one is a free camera, which is allows us to, in a sense, view what's in front of us, which allows us to navigate in and out of the uh, target. We create our objects and then we add our listeners. And so in creating the object, basically we just grab these planes. We have an image folder that has all the Hebrew letters in it. This is not bringing in text from the outside. The next iteration of this is actually bringing the Hebrew text from an XML document. But in this iteration, we're just bringing in images and that's very easy to do. You just declare your uh, bitmap file material and then you just basically number the images and pull them from the folder. We'll come over here and take a look at that folder real quick. It's called Hebrew and there's all those Hebrew letters and they're all numbered in sequence. We're bringing that sequence in. It's very easy to do. We're going to actually uh, set one side false and smooth to true. And here's our plane that we're defining and we're doing a cosine and a sine to get the X and Y and we're just basically jacking up the position, the X, Y position as we move forward and generate that spiral. Uh, very easy to do. And we add all that to the scene. Uh, the next part is we add our listeners. So we have the render engine, basically that's the fem role that's going to uh, render through the different frames as we watch this thing spin around. And we add the keyboard listeners so we can have for the second camera the navigation that we need. Here's our render engine and here's the first camera. So if which camera is set to true, then we're in the first scenario where basically we're spinning around in a circle and watching from the outside. And if that's set to false by clicking the other icon, then we're in the next scenario where we can actually navigate in and out using that like second life navigation system that we've discussed in earlier tutorials. Uh, the next part of the code basically is to start camera one or start camera two and that's setting that boolean quantity which camera to true or to false to go to the next camera. Here's our slider functions which allow us to on the fly uh, set the zoom and the spin control. And just below that are our switch case uh, functions for setting the booleans for the uh, keyboard controls. Uh, below all of that of course are the uh, MXML for setting the different uh, containers. The last part of our code is our MXML that gives us all the structures that we have on stage. We have uh, the, the camera images uh, first, one and two, which we can actually turn into clickable uh, images by just using the click start camera one or click start camera two. We have labels and then we have text area boxes and we have panels which control all the sliders and a text area which has the uh, navigation information for the second camera. So that's pretty much all there is to the code. Let's run it one more time. And I just think it's super cool. Lots of fun and we hope in the future to actually upgrade this so we can do a little bit more with it. But that's actually the representation of ELS and the Bible code.